there's been a significant shift in expectations amongst retail and corporate customers, with always-on instant payments being the new norm. Volumes in real-time payments have been scaling up in a number of markets, with the introduction of, wait for it, Fed now, the Eurozone CEPA instant and FPS in the UK. <laughs> we got there in the end. Well, to look at how expectations for local payments are likely to translate to international payments and where the challenges lie, of course, we're joined by Steph Mitchell, Head of Product International at Form 3. Steph, welcome to Cybos TV on a first day of Cybos. I hope you've had a fulfilling day so far. Absolutely. But Thank the, you for having me. The excitement starts here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start off with asking you, what are the shifts as you see them uh, that we've seen in customer expectations? So nowadays, I'm sure you know, you'll know you be able to relate to this. Every day, you're able to pay for things, and it's instant, and it happens straight away. Um, you don't need to wait for that to happen. Um, and you can do that at any time of day or night. And that's really a kind of a, an experience that all round people are used to, um, which doesn't translate into the cross-border world um, particularly well. So there's a lot of catching up to do um, for the cross-border industry. Um, to really be able to meet those kind of evolving customer demands and to be able to, to keep up with the pace of what customers are expecting today, really. Yeah, I mean, that's a fascinating point, and that, that phrase, not keeping up. I mean, what does that mean for the cross-border world, the fact that it's not keeping up <laughs> with customer expectations? It's trying, but not necessarily succeeding. There are a number of things um, which we need to work on, for sure. Um, the G20 framework has really laid out a number of those points um, of what needs to happen globally, um, and it's a real community effort to achieve that. Um, there are a number of things that need work. One of them, you know, of course, is extending operating hours so that things can move to a 24 by 7 um, operating model. Uh, you know, being able to bring in the use of instant retail payment systems to be able to support um, cross-border payment processing as well is something that would uh, would really support that. Um, one of the the key things which um, which is outlined in that framework is is really upgrading the technology and the infrastructure which supports um, cross-border payment processing. Without tackling that foundational level, you can't uh, manage to, to, to kind of delight your customers and to bring um, more fulfilling experiences for them. Does that create new opportunities, perhaps, for, for banks and financial institutions? For sure. So um, certainly uh, any bank's competitor who is managing to achieve that uh, will, uh, will present some strong competition. And for banks that want to protect their market share and, and, and protect their existing customer relationships, um, there's a real imperative to do so, um, but there's also an opportunity um, to enable them to grow and to put the customer at the heart of, of, uh, of what they do. Mm. But I mean, recently we have seen the growth and, and disruption in real-time cross-border payments. It is happening. So what learnings can we glean from that and potentially apply? Sure. Um, so I think on a, on a technology level, there's some real learnings. Um, about how to make sure your infrastructure is scalable and resilient. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a sudden surge in demand and you have a, a really large amount of volume, you're not going to fall over um, when that moment comes. So really being able to be scalable and reliable um, in a way that means, you know, those cross-border payments are less visible. Mm. Um, and and that's, a, that's a really key point is, is making that experience um, kind of seamless and, and not, not exposing any of the friction to, to your own customers. How will technology enable FIs to be at the forefront of adapting to that shift and in, in capturing these new opportunities that it presents? Sure. Um, so for banks and financial institutions, they will inevitably be grappling with, with, uh, with upgrading a large uh, stack of... Uh, <laughs> of their internal um, technologies and, and that's really a point where they make this sort of build by partner decision is, is very typical at that stage and I think where they can look to partner will really give them the ability to, uh, to get ahead. You know, there, there's no reason why, um, why you can't do multiple things at the same time but really partnering will accelerate that journey significantly and get them um, much further forward and provide that kind of foundational 
technologies that they can scale upon. So, you know, cloud-based processes, um, API connectivity, um, and, uh, and looking at that, that newer model that enables real-time sort of visibility of what's going on, real-time notifications, um, and, uh, and, you know, those kind of things you need for for improving the customer experience. I love the way when you were talking about banks, you sort of danced around the LS, the LS word, legacy systems, because that's what you were getting at. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing about. But I mean, you know, banks have to prepare. You've shown one way forward, and that is, of course, partnering with fintechs, et cetera. But is that the only tool in the box, or are there other ways that they can perhaps, or other things they can do for themselves without necessarily going down the partnership route, or perhaps combining that? Sure. So, um, you know, of course, bringing in, uh, leveraging real-time payment systems as part of your cross-border flows is an incredibly um, valuable and important thing that that um, that will support that. Um, really putting your customer at the heart of how you think about your uh, systems <laughs> upgrades is a good idea, because um, when you're able to do that, you can think about what what that experience will look like. Um, so I think there's. There's, there's a lot of work there, and I think you know it's it's a difficult challenge, but um, in order to move forwards, it's it's a necessary one. Absolutely, Steph. We're going to have to leave it there because sadly, time has gone against us. But look, we've gleaned so much from this interview, and thank you so much for joining us. And enjoy the rest of Cybos 2022. And look, I know it's a big leap ahead, but do you think you'll be going to Cybos 23? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Right. I look forward to it. Okay, we'll see you there. See you there. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.